So um, I just wanted to show off something cool that I've been working on for a, about a month or so. Uh, this is just going to be a quick, dirty video, um, nothing fancy. But I figured before I can show you uh, what it is that I've been working on, I need to show you the problem that it was meant to address. So for a while now, um, in Factorio, I've uh, enjoyed making these like cell type factories where you make a grid of train tracks and each cell within that grid is responsible for a different resource. Um, so if we take a look at this uh, circuit board or the green circuits uh, cell, what we find, and if we turn on these train stop names, we'll see that it has got a copper plate drop here on the right side and an iron plate drop here on the left side. And uh, as the raw resources are fed in, it goes down this line and makes green circuits and then outputs them onto this green circuit pickup. And that should be exactly what this, yeah, green circuit pickup. And so basically, uh, these stations, whenever they, whenever it has got an entire, a full train load of green circuits, it will turn on and signal to the rest of the factory. You can hear, see here on the signals, right here on the right hand side, the green is what the factory has to provide, and the red is what the factory is desiring right now. Um, and so this will signal that there's green circuits available and that uh, the green circuit train can come and pick green circuits up and provide them to whatever cell needs circuits. Uh, now one, this is obviously, I, I think it's more efficient to do this than uh, having a big factory of like the conventional bus um, because it allows you to have a much higher throughput of resources, meaning you can produce things in much higher quantities. But the big issue that arises is, so this is the depot, this is where all the trains go, where they sit when they're not being um, actively utilized. Uh, the issue is that you need a unique train for every unique resource in the game. So, um, or at least every resource that your factory is producing. So that means, look down here, I mean, I've got, uh, a crude oil uh, cell, and it produces uh, light oil, heavy oil, and petroleum, obviously. That means that I need a light oil, a heavy oil, and a petroleum uh, train. And the issue with this is that, uh, I, I mean, I just find it to be inefficient because these trains, you don't consume heavy oil that much, so the heavy oil train spends most of its time sitting in the factory idle. Um, and I guess what I wanted to do was make a system where these trains uh, were multi-capable, like they could, uh, any train could be dispatched to grab any resource. Because there might be a time, for instance, when um, your iron train isn't cutting it. Your one iron train doesn't have enough uh, throughput to provide the needs, uh, the iron needs of the factory. So um, I will take you over to the world. And this is, this is obviously a, a much further along world um, if you look at the map, uh, this system probably took me more than 100 hours to, to get right. Um, the first thing you'll notice is if I turn on these train station names again, uh, every station uh, in the factory now is just called a requester station. So there's no differentiating between various kinds of resources. And uh, we still have the depot, but obviously the depot has got a ton of combinators here now. Um, so you might be wondering how the trains differentiate which cells need which resources. So what you'll first notice is uh, this light that scans across each of the uh, stations with an active train in it. And, um, well, not active, it's it's like if this is the, this is the highest number station that has a train in it then the light will scan from here up to this point and then reset um, so what's happening with that is a train is coming in parking in the depot and the depot is obviously it's scanning each of these trains for which resource it has in its cargo hold and then it broadcasts that resource onto the green network so if you look uh, you'll see on the green network there's only ever one signal at a time and it, it cycles through all the trains that are actively in the depot. Uh, the red signals still represent what the factory is in need of. Um, so basically what's happening, I, uh, I already described it to you, it's, it's scanning through each of these trains uh, and broadcasting the resource that's in that train. Um, and the outside factory can basically 
say, hey, I want that resource, and will send a signal back to the depot uh, saying that it wants that train to be delivered to it, and that the depot will dispatch the train actively being scanned. So uh, just for instance, if we come down here, uh, take a look at this steel cell, uh, this this uh, train stop is requesting iron, and these lights, you can't really see them. That's what they look like. They're just behind the power poles. These lights indicate this station's stockpile of iron ore. And when it runs out of iron ore, it, not when it's fully out, but when this section can take one full train car's worth, and this section can, and this section can, all four of these lights will be red, which means this station will be in need of iron. So basically, this station is going to look for uh, an iron signal to be uh, broadcasted by the depot and when that happens it's going to send out a flag and it's also going to raise its train limit from zero to one which means that uh, if we take a look at these trains all of them have the exact same schedule depot requester go to this next one depot requester so basically it sits at the depot until it gets a signal from the depot that it can be dispatched. And then it just goes to whichever requester is available. So it, pretend there's an iron train in the depot and this steel cell wants iron ore. Um, whenever uh, the depot is broadcasting an iron ore signal, uh, only stations that are requesting iron ore are going to have capacity for a train to, or, to come to them. So uh, this train is going to get dispatched by the depot and will only be able to go to iron stations. And uh, moreover, uh, as once an iron train is on the way to this station, it will keep its uh, its limit raised to one. Uh, it won't it won't switch its limit back to zero whenever it sees the the depot. Uh, broadcasting a different resource. But if a train is not on the way, say these two stations are fighting for iron and this one gets it, this station will will lower its limit back to zero. That way, say a train carrying coal doesn't get dispatched to the uh, iron station. Even if there are, uh, if trains get misdirected to the wrong station, all the stations have filter inserters, meaning that you won't uh, load the wrong resource into a station. The cool thing, too, is that uh, this system can also handle fluids. Uh, the way that works is uh, we've got a, a factory down here producing barrels. And ob obviously, so that's how we're doing it, is we're moving fluid via barrels. What the fuck? Is this allowed? What the fuck? Is that allowed? But you'll see that it's not actually feeding barrels into the network right now. Uh, the reasoning for that is because uh, barrels are reusable. So this station only wants to produce a certain quantity of barrels for every fluid station there is in the system. So uh, if we see, for instance, there's a station um, over here, which provides heavy oil in, uh, in barrels. Oh, sorry, this is petroleum. Um, when you first set this station up here, you can see it right now. Uh, this station is going to request empty barrels. And when you first build it, this station is going to send a signal to the to the barrel uh, manufacturer over here saying, hey, produce one train load of barrels and put them into the network because now we have an extra station uh, that are, are going to need barrels. And so uh, initially when you set it up, an empty train will be dispatched here pick up empty barrels, deliver them to this station, and then this station will not be producing any more barrels until a new station is built. And uh, these barrels get fed into here, filled with their fluid, and then what happens is a train will come pick up these filled petroleum barrels, take them to whoever needs petroleum, um, which would be like a station over here. Those barrels get emptied and then immediately loaded back into the train, so now it's got empty barrels. The train with empty barrels will return to the depot and it the depot will scan and see that it's got empty barrels and then uh, send it to the station that needs empty barrels which will now be this one again because it needs a new set of empty barrels um, it might seem complicated but uh, trust me it all works out <laughs> 
So I thought I'd give you a quick demonstration of how the whole thing works and um, uh, clear up something that I didn't make all that clear. We're just on a sandbox world right now. Uh, this is kind of where I was working on the various versions of it. So I discussed the um, requester stations turning on and off based off of what they need. But one thing that I didn't uh, specify is that the provider stations also turn on and off based off of not firstly whether they have enough of the resource to fill uh, an entire train, but also whether there is another uh, station in the network that is requesting the resource that they have to provide. What this does is um, it prevents trains from, say this this station is going to provide iron plates, uh, but this station over here doesn't need it. It prevents a train from going and filling up with iron plates needlessly and then just coming back and sitting in the depot, which means we're, it's wasting a, a train that could be used for, uh, for something else. So um, just as a little demonstration, uh, the way you set these up, like you can blueprint them and just plop them right down and the uh, provider stations are easy the way they work is say you've got a factory up here that's coming and feeding um, your resources into here well you've got this little chest right here that uh, that will grab uh, an item off the belt and put it in here and basically that will indicate to the station what resource it has to provide so um, if I put right here, let's just go with circuits because I have a lot of those in my inventory. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to try to fill up with one full stack of it. That way you can know the quantity because, you know, some some items in the game only have a 50 stack and circuits have a 200 stack. But uh, we're just going to put one right here. So basically what that's looking for, uh, if there's if a circuit stack is only one, that means each train car could hold 40. Um, so that means we would only need to put... Uh, see, I only put 50 in there and this light turned on because it thinks that a stack size of green circuits is one, which means 40 would fit into a train car. So putting 50 in here turns the light on. Oops, fill this one. So what we find now is that this station can provide green circuits, but none of these trains are leaving. Um, and and the, the depot is active, it's scanning them. Uh, None of the trains are leaving because no stations need green circuits. Well, over here is a, is a requester station, and these aren't as easy uh, to set up as the providers, but they're still pretty easy. Uh, basically, when you blueprint one of these down, this little combinator right here indicates uh, what resource it's going to request. Um, and it will let you know. So uh, the default is a white flag. And so if the station sees a white flag, it doesn't it doesn't signal that to the network. It actually puts out an alert saying, hey, this station isn't configured. You can see it on the map. It's that little eye icon. Um, but if I come over here and I set this to what you're going to see is I'm going to set this to uh, request green circuits. And almost immediately, you're going to see one of these trains leave to go pick up green circuits from this provider station. And then it'll come back to the depot. The depot will scan and see that it's got green circuits and then send it to the green circuit requester. So um, and just I'm going to fill these train two of these trains with some other resource. Actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to fill keep in mind these are both all three of these trains are the exact same they all have the same schedule um but i'm just filling uh them with another resource so that you see that it's not going to dispatch a train that's got something else um so this middle train is going to be the only one for it to, to dispatch once i set this to request green circuits So there we go. Pretty simple. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with the whole system. And um, there are uh, a couple kinks to work out, but uh, for the most part, it works flawlessly. And these are new versions of the stations that I have yet to implement in my uh, actual single player run. But these versions of the stations work out almost every flaw. Um, so the, the system works almost perfectly now. Um, but yeah. Uh, I hope you liked it. Have a good day.